So what D? We will now shift our attention to loops, which, as the name suggests, allow us to repeat sections of code. There are two types of loops in MATLAB, for loops and while loops. This video focuses on while loops, which allow us to repeat a section of code as long as its condition is true. Any statements that fall between the while and end will be processed in order each time through the loop. Once the condition evaluates as false, then we continue beyond the end statement. The condition is only evaluated at the start of the loop, so if that condition becomes false halfway through the loop, that won't be noticed until the full loop is completed. It is possible to have an infinite loop, one in which the condition never becomes false. To halt this, press Ctrl C in the command window. The best way to understand how loops work is to process them exactly as MATLAB does, one line at a time. And to keep track of the results of each line, we will use a table. This takes a little patience and attention to detail, but it is worth it to understand such a powerful tool. We begin with a generic table. The leftmost column simply lists which step we are on. The other columns will be filled in with actual variable names. The note on the right reminds us that the condition must be true in order to continue the loop for each next row. And the dot 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 at the bottom reminds us that this table could have any number of rows depending on how many times we go through the loop. Let's look at this example. First, I write the names of the variables into the table. Here we have error, real, and guess. Then, next to step zero, I write the values of the variables before reaching the loop. Error begins at 27, real at 5, and guess at 9. Now the code reaches the while statement, and we need to evaluate the condition. From the table, we see error currently is 27. This is greater than 1, so the condition is true, and we enter the loop for the first time. Then each of these commands are executed. Error equals 9 minus 5, or 4. Key point, the previous values of these variables are overwritten by their new values. So, error equals 4, and there is no memory it ever equaled 27. In the table, it is the lowest values that are used in our calculations. So, the next command becomes guess equals 9 minus 4 divided by 2. This returns a 7 and the 7 replaces the 9 as the value of guess. Does real change at all in the loop? No, so it still equals 5, and it will equal 5 no matter how many times we run the loop. Okay, we reach the end statement, which means we jump back to the top of the loop and evaluate the condition. Is error 4 greater than 1? Yes it is, so we enter the loop again. Processing each line produces these results. We loop back up and check the condition. Error is still greater than 1, so we enter the loop. After this first command, error now equals 1. This makes the condition false. However, MATLAB doesn't know that yet. It will not evaluate the condition until after completing each run through the loop. So the next line is processed, and guess has its value updated. Then MATLAB checks the condition and discovers the condition is false and the loop is now completed. Next, we'll example a slightly more complicated example. This one adds the twist of array indexing, rather than overriding scalars like in the last example. We'll take an overview of the code here, then build the table on the next slide. After the first two commands, what values will Bob hold? Bob will be a three-element vector with two zeros and a five. Why? We assign the third index in Bob to be a five. By default, MATLAB backfills zeros to make the vector large enough. Within the loop, the first command is a simple but important one. The variable int will increase by one each time through the loop. The next command is more complicated. What do you think would happen in the case that end is 4? Let's go one step at a time. First, the variable end is replaced by its value 4, providing this statement. 
This statement means extract the value in the third index from Bob, then multiply by 2, then assign that product into the fourth index of Bob. With that primer, let's now build the table. First, we fill in the variable names. There are only two in this case. Then we fill in the values before reaching the loop. In this case, end is 3, and Bob is that vector we saw last slide. Now, reaching the while statement, we evaluate the condition. Yes, end is less than or equal to 6, so we enter the loop. First, end increases by 1. Then the tricky command. First, substitute 4 in the place of end. Next, extract the third index of Bob, which here is a 5. Then multiply 5 times 2, which gives 10. Finally, store that 10 into the fourth index of Bob. This updates Bob to now look like this vector. Notice that the first three indices of Bob are unchanged. That is because we assigned a value to the fourth index specifically. We now put that pattern on repeat. Check the condition. It is true here. Increment the value of end. It is now a 5. And perform the array indexing and multiplication to update the value of Bob. We continue doing this until the condition is false, which occurs after end reaches the value 7. We don't check the condition until after updating Bob one more time. And then it is finished. Thank goodness these examples only have a few iterations through the loop. Some loops may iterate thousands of times. And other loops never end. Here is an obvious example of an infinite loop. Q starts at 5. 5 is bigger than 2, so we enter the loop. Each time we do, Q gets larger and larger. It is clear that Q will always be greater than 2, and so the condition will never be false. If you encounter this, or any other situation where MATLAB seems to be running slow, press Ctrl-C on the keyboard. If you are a Mac user, then use Command-C. This will stop the execution of the program. While loops appear complicated on the surface, but if we take the time to study each step for a couple iterations, we can quickly identify the pattern and understand their operation.